Good afternoon to all of you. We've got an agreement, an agreement on the multi-annual financial framework. This is an agreement which shows the leadership of the European Council and of the European Union. In December, we'd already made significant progress to give candidate status to Ukraine and to Moldova and to start negotiations with Ukraine and Moldova. And today, we're going a step further. We got the 27 heads of state and government to uh, reach political agreement, which will allow us to mobilize 50 extra billion euros as part of the Ukraine facility. I think that this decision sends out a very clear message to the Ukrainians and shows our determination to be fully mobilized to support their future, to support their freedom. And it's also a message to our, our European populations. It shows our unity and European leadership. And it shows that we are not intimidated by Russia, which is infringing Europe, international law. And it's a message to the United States, to our partners in the world, uh, that we support Ukraine and its territorial integrity. This uh, financial agreement will also allow us in the future to uh, spend money on other subjects, the Western Balkans, for example, migration, the external, digression, uh, the external dimension of uh, migration on technology and on defense. Now, on Ukraine, that's an absolute priority for us and will remain so. So, a military support for Ukraine, we had the occasion today to discuss in depth how it is important to make more effort for more ammunition, for more military equipment for Ukraine. We have made good progress in supporting Ukraine through the European Peace Facility. We have decided to task our ministers to finalize work. We understand how it is important to deliver. And this uh, debate today was extremely uh, useful to make very clear that uh, we are determined uh, to make more efforts and to uh, make sure uh, that Ukraine will get the military equipment they, they need uh, to uh, defend their country and to defend their future. We also had the occasion to welcome the political agreement on using windfall profits on Russian frozen assets to help rebuild Ukraine. And the idea is to continue to work uh, on this uh, track, which is also an important one. And once again, we have discussed how we need to address the question of the circumvention of sanctions. Uh, we are still determined to make sure that uh, everything is done to reduce the possibilities to avoid uh, those sanctions which uh, target um, Russia and the Kremlin. This is the first element I wanted to mention for um, uh, this uh, European Council meeting. The second topic I would like to uh, mention and to uh, uh, explain what we have discussed is the situation in the Middle East. And you know that uh, we do not have written conclusions uh, on the Middle East, but we had once again an in-depth exchange of views on the situation in that region. And I would like to vous résumer. And let me try to um, give you a summary of uh, what we agreed on that subject. The first point is that we are extremely determined to continue in Europe and with the support of uh, our member states to reduce as much as possible the risks of regional ex escalation, in particular in the Red Sea. We know how important that is. And the second point is that we, of course, are determined to continue to um, do what we can to um, plead for the freeing of the hostages with no conditions attached. And we will continue in partnership with uh, member states and also our international partners to do what we can to make sure that humanitarian aid is delivered to Gaza. We know that there is a major pressing need on that subject. Every civilian life counts, every life counts, and that's why we need to be mobilized there. And the third point I wanted to mention, because here too, there was a strong political agreement within the European Council, and that is how important it is to relaunch, relaunch the negotiation process for a two-state solution. And we once again called out, called that that's called out for a two-state solution, a guarantee of the existence of the two peoples that they can 
coexist in peace in the future. And uh, so we need there to be peace, not just between Israel and the Palestinians, but between Israel and all of its neighboring countries as well. We discussed what the uh, elements were led by High Representative Borrell. And uh, we had the idea of initiating a peace conference with other actors, and we will be coming back to that at a future European Council to that subject. And our ministers will continue to be very uh, engaged in such an important subject. And a final word, we're meeting at a time where in a number of European countries, including in Belgium, and uh, you will have seen that around this building, that our farmers are expressing their anger, their discontent, and their concerns about the future. And uh, it's important for us to address that subject as well. And we have reaffirmed not just how important the common agricultural policy is for us. It's one of the core pillars of European policy. And uh, there's an essential role for the common agricultural policy. And after that, the Commission told us about the first short-term measures that have been taken and also a process that has been launched to bring together the stakehold, stakeholders in the uh, agro food, agri-food sector so we can have uh, a democratic process where we can listen to one another and where they can uh, express their concerns and uh, that can be integrated into the common agricultural policy in the future so we can uh, take account of the needs of our farmers, we can take account of the need for there to be food security, health uh, as well. And we know, after all, this is a very important economic uh, sector for all of us. So those were some points, uh, some of the major points that came out of our meeting, which showed once again that the European Council can surprise people surprise people by our unity and our capacity to uh, discuss and reach uh, speedy solutions to difficult questions and difficult problems. Uh, and so I'd like to thank all of the teams who've worked so hard uh, since December, in fact, since the, uh, the day after the last summit, where we decided to um, come back today to uh, reach uh, answers to questions such as Ukraine. Thank you. President von der Leyen, you have the floor. 